Hey everybody, happy Monday. My name's Colby and I've got a few different important Starlink topics to talk about today. I'll treat this as kind of like a recap video for everything that happened late last week and over the weekend. So the three topics that I have to talk about today are pricing changes for the US market for Starlink standard residential plan. There's a new mount available for Gen 3 and then also an update on the infamous pipe adapter. Let's do it. Okay, to, so to kick things off, let's talk about the Starlink pipe adapter. Now, I previously released a video calling the Gen 3 pipe adapter Starlink's worst accessory ever. And I still think that's true, and apparently Starlink does as well, because they've got a new version coming out. Now, it's not on the shop yet, but one of my viewers sent me an email letting me know that the Best Buy website had an updated version of the Gen 3 pipe adapter. So let's check it out. So we're looking at the Starlink shop on their website, and this is the list product listing for the Gen 3 standard pipe adapter. And as you can see, it has not been updated. This is the same design as the one that I previously reviewed. But let's take a look at the Best Buy website, because if you search pipe Starlink pipe adapter on the Best Buy website, which is a, an authorized Starlink reseller, you see this. This is interesting, because as you can see, it's a similar design, but it looks like they've lengthened the uh, depth of where you can insert the pipe, and they've added another set screw, another bolt there. And it looks to be the same price. It's $38 on the Best Buy website. That's the same price as the older version that's on the Starlink website. So what I'm thinking happened was that Starlink came out with this new design for the pipe adapter, and Best Buy obviously grabbed up the initial stock of it. They bought them from Starlink. Starlink, however, is not selling the updated version yet on their website, probably because they're clearing out their old inventory of the normal first version uh, pipe adapters. Okay, so next up, we have some pricing changes in the US market. So this is kind of interesting. People were getting emails from Starlink over the weekend, letting them know that their price for their standard service plan is either gonna go up or go down. I received one of these emails letting me know that my price is going to be increasing because I had a service plan that was under the discounted standard rate. So if you remember uh, my video about the hidden, you know, secret Starlink plan, in that video I talked about the discounted standard rate, which was $90 a month for, you know, the residential plan in high capacity areas, and how you could have kind of exploit a loophole that allowed you to get that even though you weren't at an eligible address. Well, Starlink, it looks like, has patched that loophole finally, and, but that's not what this price increase is about. This price increase or decrease, depending on where you are, has to do with a recalibration or an adjustment of their capacity map. So Starlink no longer publishes the capacity map on their website. They used to have a page that you could visit where you could see exactly which service cells were considered low capacity, which means there's a lot of Starlink users in one area and not a lot of bandwidth to go around, versus high capacity, which means that there's a lot of network capacity because there are so few Starlink users in that area. So what this email says, and I'll pop it up on the screen here, the Starlink monthly service price for residential customers is changing as follows. $30 decrease in areas with excess capacity. The new price will be $90 a month. And a $30 increase in areas with limited capacity. New price will be $120 a month. As a current customer in an area with limited capacity, your monthly service plan price will increase to $120 per month beginning on June 10th, 2024. If you didn't get an email, then your price is not changing. Only the people that are having, that are affected by this pricing adjustment are getting emails. And you may be confused um, because the bottom, or the second point here says that, you know, I'm gonna have a $30 increase to $120 a month. Well, that's the normal residential price anyway. So if you were on the previous, you know, discounted $90 a month service plan and you get this email, that means you're going to be you're going to start paying $120 a month because your area is no longer considered excess capacity or high capacity. On the flip side of that, some of you may be getting a price decrease. Some of you may be going from the regular $120 a month plan to the now discounted standard plan which costs $90 per month. And that's because in your area there's an excess of capacity. There's plenty of bandwidth to go around. There's not a lot of not a lot of Starlink users in your area. So you're going to see a pricing reduction. Now I know that people that are getting a price increase are not going to be happy. And then the people that are getting the decrease are going to be super happy. So 
it kind of balances out there. I mean, you can't please everybody, right? Really, I think what this is, is just an adjustment of their capacity. In the previous video that I talked about with the secret service plan, the discounted standard service plan in the United States, I talked about how Sterling seemingly has been ignoring this that plan, not adjusting their capacity map to reflect current state. And it looks like they finally got the message. They It looks like they patched that loophole, and they're also now paying attention and updating their internal capacity data. Just to reiterate there, the regular price of the Starlink standard residential subscription in the United States is not changing. It is still $120 per month. That's the default rate. The only thing that's changing is whether you're, whether or not your address, people's specific addresses are considered discounted or non-discounted. So non-discounted is the just base $120 a month rate. And some addresses are gonna flip, you know, whether it's flipping from regular to discounted or from when they were previously discounted, now they're normal. So that's the, the price deal, that's the price changes. It's not really an increase across the board, it's just that some people are now flipping into that discounted eligibility area, and some people are flipping from where that was previously discounted, now they're paying full price. And the final topic for today's update has to do with a new Gen 3 accessory. There's a new mount available in the Starlink shop at shop.starlink.com, and it is called the Standard Mobility Mount. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're on the standard mobility mount product listing page right here. And as you can see, it is a basically a flat mount kit for the Gen 3 standard dish. Now, the Gen 3 dish includes a kickstand mount and it has screw holes in the kickstand mount. However, that's not a very good, uh, that's not a very strong attachment point. Okay, you got a lot of failure points there. This new mobility mount is great because it allows you a very secure and waterproof attachment mechanism to be able to fit the standard dish to your RV roof, your van roof, or even like a roof rack. So this is great. And it's 35 bucks, which is pretty cheap if you ask me. And it looks like they say that the mobility mount is designed to create a waterproof seal and protect against water ingress when properly mounted to wood, fiberglass, metal, plastic, and slotted rails on vehicle racks. So this is extremely flexible. You can mount it to a variety of surfaces. And if you look in the actual instruction manual here, we see that it does indeed come with not only lag screws for wood applications, but it also comes with some bolts and nuts so that you can secure it to metal, fiberglass, or whatever. And you also get four of these, I assume they're rubber sealing washers to be able to keep water out of where you're drilling those holes. So the standard mobility mount is mainly targeted to those of you that want to use your Starlink Gen 3 dish in motion. And this is kind of the second piece of evidence that we have now that Starlink is finally kind of giving up on trying to sell people this flat high performance dish. Now, as you know, previously Starlink says that the $2,500 flat high performance dish is the only one that you should use in motion. Looks like Starlink is backpedaling on that a little bit now. They still say on their website that the flat high performance is the only dish that's approved for in motion use and that using other dishes in motion can void your warranty. However, in my previous video where I talked about the new Gen 2 standard actuated flat mode, that new feature in the app, this is another piece of that puzzle where Starlink is now offering us the ability to mount our the, Gen, the newest dish, the Gen 3 standard, flat mounted on a roof, on a vehicle roof, so that we can use it in motion. I did go ahead and order this new mount and I will be trying it out, doing a full review and an installation tutorial, so stay tuned to check that one out. So that's all I had to talk about for today's update video. Let me know what you think about these new mounts, the new pipe adapter version, and then the new mobility mount for Gen 3. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And then also, have you been affected by the price change? Did you get an email letting you know that you your price is gonna be increasing or decreasing? We can talk about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Until next time, we'll see you later.